What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finished Coding. This is part two of our Flappy Bird series on Scratch 3. So let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now quick interjection here, if you've not watched part one of the series, please watch that video first before you come here because we're picking up from where we left off and you'll be pretty lost. I'll leave a card for you right here Please watch the video and then come right back. So in this video, we'll be mainly dealing with our pipes and dealing with uh, all sorts of clones and other stuff. And it's going to be a little bit complicated, folks, but trust me, you will make it in the end. So without further ado, let's get right into our program. The first thing you need to do once you've opened up your editor is to import the pipes. And like I mentioned in part one, all the art that I'll be using will be linked in the description below. So please go ahead and head over to the Google Drive file and download all the sprites. Now keep in mind that these are just pipes and you could use uh, any uh, Flappy Bird pipes that you find on Google uh, images if you think that's gonna look better, but I'm just gonna be using these pipes in this video. So if you do wanna maintain some uniformity, please use my pipes. So uh, within choose a sprite, you wanna click on upload a sprite navigate your libraries file until you actually find your one, two, and three pipes. Now you would just wanna click on the pipe which says one, and uh, within one's costumes, you can import the other two uh, pipes. So you can click upload costume, and then uh, using your control key, select two and three at the same time, click open, and you should have all of them uh, set up. I'm gonna rename this uh, pipe to be, uh, I'm gonna rename one to be pipe because that's a better name to, um, to basically describe this so that I am. The next thing you want to do is to actually initialize your pipes when the green flag is clicked. Now I know I initially said that you would have a thumbnail and in that case we'd have a little bit different of a start code for our pipe. We wouldn't start when the green flag is clicked but that's just one line of code folks and we'll change that when we are dealing with the thumbnail. So for now just head over to events, grab a when green flag is clicked and uh, get into your initializations. Now, one thing that you will want to do uh, to the pipe sprite is to hide it at the beginning. Now, you may be wondering why would we hide the pipe sprite? And that's because we're actually dealing with clones and we'll be making clones and showing them, but we will not be showing the original pipe to the user. I hope that kind of makes some sense. So within um, uh, when green flag clicked, all we, wa uh, all we want to have is a hide and right after that, we want to have a repeat until. Now this repeat until is going to happen until the game is over and I'm gonna use a variable called game over to actually regulate when the game is over. So I'm gonna say repeat until game over is equals to true and I know we've not set up the game over variable yet so just click on make a variable within the variables category and call it game over. So once you've done that just click OK and put that um, icon right on the left side of the equals to sign. Once you're done with that, let's get into our um, repeat until loop. So here's what you need to do. Now I'm gonna wait a random of two and four seconds, okay? Now you could change this depending on how fast or slow you want the pipes to keep coming up, but I think two and four is a pretty decent number. Now here's what we actually need to do. So uh, right after we wait, or actually right before we wait uh, for two to four seconds, we want to create a clone of ourselves. So to do that, head over to control and grab this block which says create clone of myself. And that's pretty much all you'd have to do within this um, uh, pipe when the green flag is clicked. Now we have actually initialized a variable right here called game over. So initially I just want to set game over to be false so that uh, you know this condition uh, actually executes um, regardless of what they said game over to be default initially. So now here's where our code gets a little bit more complicated and now we have to deal with our clones. To start dealing with your clones, what you need to do is to first head over to the control category and grab this block of code which says when I start as a clone. And this is going to be uh, kind of like the when green flag clicked, but for clones. So when I do start as a clone, what I want to do initially uh, is going to be showing the sprite because the clones are what are going to be shown to the user. And uh, once we show it, we'd want the pipe to go to the extreme right end of the screen and to be aligned right at the center in, um, in the Y axis, okay? So uh, what we'll have to do is just have a go to X and Y position from the motion category 
and make sure you have Y set up to zero. And as far as my X position is concerned, I'm gonna be saying go to X 240 because that's the extreme right end of the screen. Now keep in mind that we have three costumes uh, for our pipe and each of them are aligned right at the center, so that's pretty safe. But we'd also want to make sure that the pipe switches to a random of those three costumes. So similar to how we had a wait pick random seconds, we'd have a choose costume to pick random seconds. So you can just head over to looks, grab a switch costume to, and uh, here's the reason uh, I called my costumes numbers and not names. Uh, and it is because I can just type in pick random one to three and it would choose a pipe at random. So that's the point. So once it does choose a pipe at random, we'd want it to move towards the left end of the screen at a particular speed within a loop that's going to basically end when the um, sprite touches the left end of the screen. To do that, head over to the control section and grab a repeat until. And uh, within your repeat until condition, what you want to do is to grab a less than. And uh, you want to repeat this loop until the X position of the clone is less than negative 220 and that is the position I've fixed as you know like the killing point of the clones or the extreme left end of the screen. Now on the left side of your condition you just want to head over to motion and grab this block which says X position uh, which, uh, which stores the X position of every single clone that you are using. So once you have that in place uh, you could type in your code right away but I would prefer you add in this one line of code before that and that is to delete the clone right after this loop is done because uh, usually you know people forget that and that leads to a whole lot of bugs so make sure you do that first. Now here's what we need to do within our main loop. So within our main loop we'd want the sprite to keep moving like I said to the left so what we'll have to do is to change x or our x position by a constant amount and I'm going to choose negative 4 as my speed because I think that's a decent speed for the pipe and uh, we'd want it to be negative because we want it to move to the left and not to the right and uh, once we do change x by 4 we also do want to check for a couple of collisions. Now collisions doesn't necessarily uh, necessarily mean that uh, you know the bird hits the pipe although that could mean that and it's likely to mean that. What I really meant when I said it was that the pipe needs to be at a certain you know, position during which we'll have to do something. And uh, what that position is, is going to be beyond the uh, left of the bird. And the thing we're gonna do when that happens is to increment our score. And we actually don't have a score variable yet, so I'm gonna make one right away. So I'm gonna click on make a variable and set it for all sprites, and I'm gonna call it score. And uh, click OK. Now initially we want to set score to be equals to zero, so I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to head right to when the green flag is clicked and say set score to be zero. There we are. Now within the pipe sprite, okay, what I want to do is to make another variable called changed. And again, I want to set this to uh, be for all sprites. And if you don't understand why I'm doing this for now, that's okay, you'll understand in a minute. So I'm going to set this to be for all sprites and click okay. And uh, right at the beginning, I want to set changed to be false. There we are, set it to be false. Perfect. Now, within, uh, when I start as a clone, right before I delete a clone, uh, delete this clone, what I am going to be doing is to set changed to be false once again. And um, where are we? Yeah, here we are. Uh, and right within our repeat until, I want to grab an if then, and uh, this is when you'll realize why we use this variable. Okay, I'm not going to be using it initially, um, but you'll see the point. So I'm going to uh, grab a less than once again. I'm going to duplicate this X position, uh, X position and put it on the left side. And when the pipe actually moves, we want to check uh, if it's less than the X position of the bird. And you can do that by heading over to the sensing tab and changing this backdrop of stage to be X position of bird and put that on your right hand side. Now, if this is the case, you may say change score by one. So I'm going to do that right now and uh, you'll see what I mean when I say uh, this is going to result in a bunch of errors. So I'm just going to um, start this code right here and now when the um, you know pipe actually moves past, you can see that the score keeps increasing really, really, really fast and you may wonder why and the reason for that is the pipe has several moments when this condition is actually equals to true and that's because we actually haven't had a regulator, as I call it, uh, in this condition checker. Because 
this is always going to be equals to true when the pipe is right after the bird and instead of just you know changing the score by one we're going to be changing it by a whole ton and in our case that's 26 times so to fix this all you'd have to do is to grab in a simple um uh, you want to grab in a simple and put that inside your condition first keep this as one of the conditions and as the other condition you want to say if changed and you can just put in that value right there is equals to false now if this is the case we're going to assume that we haven't changed the score just as yet and we can actually change our score and once we do change our score we want to set changed back to be true and uh, the next time you know this condition is actually checked now change is going to be equals to true and it's never going to change the score once again so let me redo this uh, now and let me just run this code so now you can see right here uh, wait the score is 26 initially i thought i set it to zero okay there we are so the green flag is clicked and yeah i'm going to stop the flappy bird from falling completely and now just have the score uh, run so now you can see score is zero initially but as we move now it's just one and now changed is false uh, changed is not false and uh, right after the clone is deleted it's or right before the clone is deleted it's going to be false once again so that the next clone that comes in our way will go through the exact same procedure and that's how we actually regulate our score with the help of this changed variable before i wind up with this video i do want to do one more thing and that is to actually set up the collision between the bird and the pipe so to do that head over to the bird sprite and it's pretty simple so uh, in our if condition we had if not touching ground then we'd have all this code right here now keep in mind that either when we touch the ground or when we touch the pipe we are actually going to be ending the game so all you'd have to do is to just have an or within the knot and this is pretty important don't do it the other way around and or within the knot and say if touching ground if not touching ground or touching pipe and you can just uh, scroll a little bit i'm going to zoom out so that you can see better with this uh, text size and just change that to pipe and that's pretty simple that's all you have for your collision and uh, if this is the case then it's basically going to hide the bird and i'm going to hide all the variables that the user doesn't really have to change uh to see and that's all the variables except score i'm going to move score right at the top and let's try playing flappy bird right away so i can move up and score changed by one and now we actually have score changing constantly and this is a bug but uh, we'll fix that in the next video but the important thing to note is that the game also ends when we touch the pipe and that is exactly what we've wanted to do and that's what we'll be doing in this video if you've enjoyed this video please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video